Well, we are about to have liftoff, so mm -hmm. their game is going to start very soon. In terms of dealing with time pressure, I know that Yasuo is very fast. What has your experience been with training Charlie? I think that's one of his one of his issues is he he really likes to think, which is a good property, and here they're off, but he definitely can get in time pressure sometimes. He overthinks things, so he'll have to keep an eye on that. And 1E4 has been played. Here we see the Karakon defense indeed. All right, Prophet Danya. Predict a move where we're going to see a blunder, just for fun. Just a random um, move. I'm going to predict move 18. Move 18, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we'll see if the Prophet did it once again, of course. Indeed, we will. Bishop out to f5. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, so mm -hmm. I was going to say the reason why it's important to bring the bishop out first is because he wants to push e6, and it's always good to activate your bishop outside of the pawn chain. Right. But, well, the thing that we talked about with... Um, with Charlie, is that, is that against this move, you bring your queen out early to b3. And what that accomplishes is that exploits the newly created weakness of the b7 square. So and do you Charlie think, kind of confirming that here. And do you think Hikaru uh, showed Yasuo yes. this line? Absolutely. And definitely they watched my stream, which happened after Hikaru's stream, and revised Are their predictions. Are you sure that he Not caught him anymore. This That's a blunder. <laughs> <laughs> that plunders a pawn on b7, which Charlie can simply capture. Oh my gosh. So now you show Charlie another idea. And yeah. again, last time Charlie won the game on move six, and now he won a pawn on move six. Danya, and can you coach me too, man? Like this is this is this is absurd. <laughs> He's Go almost winning here. Knight Danya, to... Please help me too. No, I can't believe this. Knight d7 saves the rook, but after that, either bishop to b5 or bishop to f4. That is a big blunder by Yasuo here. Now, Charlie, I'm assuming Yasuo will see knight d7 because that's really forced. And then let's not celebrate prematurely, those of you who are Charlie fans. Mm -hmm. Yasuo is very good at defending. And after knight d7, at which he finds, it's hard to follow this up. Bishop b5 is not an easy move to find, and neither is bishop to f4. So Charlie will have to think on his feet here. But this is a big, big opening moment. White, after bishop f4, I think, is almost winning objectively. Well, why don't we uh, take a listen to Yasuo and see what he has to okay. say about this move. Yeah, definitely a blunder by me to lose the pawn, but it, in general, it doesn't really matter. I just got to think of his moves and what he's attacking. I just, I'm moving quick. I'm just going to beat him through. Uh, yeah. He still feels feel confident. confident, wow. Honestly, with the opening. I feel like I know the opening really well, and I know the situation I want to put myself sack, in. I'm just turning the music. It's really loud. <laughs> I see, I see. This is not it, coach. <laughs> yep, this is not it. But, but the thing is, Charlie, I mentioned his pawn situation. Know what to do. His time situation. Well, he still seems very focused, and at least he's not, you know, shocked or feeling nervous, because then he would play worse. Yeah, definitely. And and he strike, strike me as someone who's pretty confident in, boom, in his boom, play. And so, keep this here. What worries me about Charlie is definitely oh. the time. I mean, if he spends five minutes here figuring stuff out, he's not going to have enough time for the middle of the game. He doesn't know what to do, I guess. I guess he's thinking about developmental moves. He could, I guess, go here and look for a double we'll attack, but that doesn't up. really do anything. He's just going to waste time. He probably should just develop his his knights, because this is already bad. This knight's hard to get developed. See move, to he to That's here. But if he goes here, then... Yeah, and it's weird, good. because Yasuo was just explaining how he didn't think that, this move was really good, so he definitely... Uh, missed the the scariest thing about this position, which was the bishop g5. Of, I mean, Charlie is playing very well. Yeah, I mean, knight f6 here holds on because bishop takes knight on d7. It's a humongous threat. And yeah, the so reason why it's a threat, mm -hmm. just to slow down a little bit, is because um, if the queen takes the knight, the queen is no longer protecting the rook on a8. So the rook Correct. is then hanging. And if, um, you know, bishop takes, you can't take back with your king. So the only other option would be to play a move like bishop e7. Uh, but that's just totally lost. So knight f6 is a great find by Yasuo so that he can recapture with the knight. Right. And now, you know, the best move is probably bishop out to f4 in order to guard the b8 square. But from a practical perspective, bishop to g5 could be a very dangerous move for black to deal with because I'm not sure how to deal with that move exactly. Bishop to g5 pins the knight on f6 and then threatens bishop captures knight on d7. So knowing Charlie, my guess is he's going to play bishop g5. And Yasuo will have to think on his feet there. That puts Black in a very, very dangerous opening situation. Well, let's actually take a look then at what Charlie let's is thinking it. so that we can see if that's his plan.
is very focused here. Yes, he is. Okay, I think I'm taking oh, no. so much time. The time too. Yes, he does, and he takes on d7. That is inaccurate because now the knight recaptures, and he, que he drops his queen back. That's actually totally fine. He got, plays it safe. For 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 a second, I saw him dropping his his queen back, um, in the wrong move order because I was listening in. But that makes I sense. I could have held the pin, but I'm just gonna go back to normal. was a bad move all right so he thinks it was a bad bad move and bad now move. yasuo actually has a good position i don't like that yeah i mean he's got enough compensation for the pawn i um, can go here I and hold the pin but then i'm about equal. Well, i'm not super trapped just listening in to see what he's saying here oh no he seems nervous he is he is and yasuo playing very quickly here that's going to be big queen a4 is a decent move I don't like it. I don't like what I'm doing he right now. He doesn't like it because... I don't like it. I don't like what, I, I don't yeah, like what I'm Yeah, his opponent is developing so quickly. That's why he's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Now Yasuo should develop his bishop on f8 to d6. He's playing perfectly. <laughs> I, I told you, Yasuo is so strong. He, he played everything well after the blunder on b7. Yep. Bishop f4 would have been crucial there to stop rook b8. And... Um... But it's okay. Charlie just needs to develop, which he does. He's gotten a lot quieter all of a sudden. Um, but I like that he's always quiet when he's taking it seriously, but then when he plays well, his personality comes out. Right, and Bishop d3 here would be an incredibly strong move. I would be shocked, with full due respect, if Yasuo finds this to prevent White from castling short. Oh my gosh, that would be crazy. No, it's, <laughs> yes, it's not intuitive because he just wants to finish development, which makes sense. Castle, castle. I think from the perspective of these players, I would say the position is about equal. White is up a pawn. Black is excellent development. Mm -hmm. Anybody's game. And when you say from uh, the perspective of these players, do you think at their level or, you know, even if these grandmasters were playing this? Black's definitely better here. Black, if, if Yasuo handles this correctly, Black is significantly better because he's got a huge initiative. The thing is, in a position like this, when you don't have experience, it's hard to position your pieces. So Yasuo might be struggling here to figure out exactly what to do. Charlie, on the other hand, has a very clear system of development that we talked about. In part, he can develop his knight on b1. He can develop his rook on f1. It's harder for Yasuo to find a system of development here, but we'll see how he handles that. Given the way he's played, I have confidence in him as well. Well, part of the reason it's hard for him to figure out development is because his pieces already have really nice squares. So... He's gotten everything completed now, and it'll be tough for him to figure out how to follow up. Um, I, I Quiet moves like rookie eight, uh, you know, F6, E5, that's something that, you know, somebody who's been playing in tournaments for a while would see. But I think given that he's on his fourth week of chess, that's a very slow plan to go for. And I see just I have a stream on mute. He's hovering over A5, which would not be a great move that doesn't accomplish much. Another problem for him is queen on d8 is tied down to the knight on d7. A move like queen f6 would have been excellent, except it drops the knight. So he's got to solve that problem as well. And that's right. why he's taking a lot of time. Queen c7 is a reasonable move, but probably it would have been better to play knight b6 followed by queen f6. Still, very reasonable choice by Yasuo. Queen c7, developing the queen, putting pressure on that h2 pawn potentially. I think now is another great moment to listen in on his stream see how he's thinking about this mm -hmm. tricky right. position. And good beats too. <laughs> Indeed. He's quieter than he is in practice games. I think he really doesn't want to waste any time. If I go here, let me think. If I go here, he definitely has ideas of going here and hitting my piece. Then I can just go here though and attack the queen. I like that, that's fine. His pieces just look so compared to mine. Look at my pieces. Attacking, 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 <laughs> double attacking. My piece is about to get here and win a pawn in a second too. Do you think like, he has enough arrows really on the board? Good. Nah, I don't know, he needs a couple more. Can I go here? <laughs> and then look to just win the pawn? What do you think of this plan, Danya? Well, he goes knight g4, it's a little superficial though because h3 yeah, just looking. checks and <laughs> knocks the knight back off, but... I like, it's ambitious, and I gave this advice to Charlie, but Yasuo's doing the same thing. Just creating threats is gonna be huge here. Charlie's gotta see that pawn on H2, and he's gotta prevent that threat with H3. That is a must. Right. 
Um, and I do like that he's going for this instead of the pawn pushes, even if it's slow. I think I just can win a pawn here back. Correct. And I'm looking at his mouse here. He's going for his knight. That is not the right piece to reach to. And he plays knight e5. He's about to. Adam Radzik, thank you three uh -oh. months. Appreciate it. Back. H3 is the uh, move. He's yeah, got to chase you, that you. knight from g4. Do you think Yasuo's confidence is a good thing? If he ever moves this. Yeah. And here we see h3 by Charlie. Both of these players playing so well here. Wow. And I think it's a great thing because with this time control, the faster you play, the more confidently you play. It projects to your opponent. It reflects itself in the moves that you play. And we just see in the pieces, the place, piece placement from Yasuo, we can see his confidence shining through. I believe that is important. Psychology is the part of the game, especially here, with so much on the line. Both of these players are huge streamers, hugely successful. But trust me, and I think you'd agree with me, Alexandra, they are shaking right now. Both of them are nervous, even Yasuo. Oh, absolutely. Um, and to see this kind of move, I'm honestly just very impressed because it's such a quiet move to see. And knight e5 did look intuitive because you're putting your knight in the center, you're blocking the threat. So um, Moist Critical not only found a nice strategical move, but he also showed his calculation skills by not blundering knight e5. Mm -hmm. Here we see Yasuo deferring, dropping his knight back to f6. And knight e5, oh. a reasonable move. Now it works because he kicked. The, he saw that he has to kick the knight out first, and now his knight on e5 is protected twice. It's only attacked twice, so there's no worry if um, Yasuo yeah, so grabs that knight. If he starts seeing moves like knight d2, <laughs> knight f3, I'm uh, considering My, so impressed. Daniel. Alexander, I I don't care how this game ends. I am equally impressed with, and I'm not going to pretend that I haven't coached one of them, but I'm equally impressed with the playing level of both of these players. Everybody in the chat has to understand these are players who virtually have had no basically a nodding acquaintance with the game of until three weeks ago and this is how they are playing that is just diligence and grinding on display right here and i am really impressed just no words applause. absolutely and absolute applause so close they're both near five minutes on the clock mm -hmm. i think this is the, the closest game i've seen in a while and and danya we're on move 16 your prediction <laughs> was a blunder on move 18 Let's if it actually right. happens on move 18, I'm going to be scared, Alexandra. <laughs> what will I do with all this power? <laughs> I know, it'll be crazy. But here, Charlie has to bring his other knight out, knight d2 and knight f3. Right, I'm and, a little and bit this worried. is the plan we'd be sur surprised with if he sees, mm -hmm. because it's kind of slow, right? Um, and he has to understand that he wants to reroute his knight to f3. And we talked about this in our lessons, the, the idea of going knight d2, knight f3. What we also talked about is developing the bishop on c1, which would be a terrible idea. He's got to see that the rook on b8 is putting pressure on the pawn on b2. So the bishop on c1 is tied down at the moment mm -hmm. to that pawn on b2. But that is a static kind of, I wanted to say a static dynamic, but that is a static okay, threat can that talk, can be hard to can see. Can we talk in normal language here, Danya? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's just something that it sits there. It's easy to forget about the fact that that rook is putting pressure on the pawn. You can forget about that and move the bishop. Wait, Charlie has to move. This is Monka S, honestly. He's got less than five minutes. He has got to trust himself. He can't dip himself down to two minutes. Oh, no. Um, and I see he's hovering the rook. He's about to bring the rook to Not E3. Bad. But no, he, he put it back. So, oh my God, he played knight d2. Look at this. Look at this play. Knight d2 to f3. Patience by Charlie. Doesn't lift the rook up yet. Incredible. Both of these players. Incredible. And we'll see now. Now the ball in Yasuo has scored. Move 17. <laughs> One move away from the game deciding <laughs> blunder. Right. And I mean, a move like knight e4 is interesting for him here if he wants to just trade off. Because if he doesn't move his pieces... Ideas like a5, as you mentioned earlier, they don't really have a follow-up plan. I like h6 because it gives the bishop space to go back to and it creates some space, but it's also a very slow move to see. It is because players at the top, they want to do something. They want to get mm -hmm. something done. Rook d not bad, just kind of biding his time. That rook on a close foul, Charlie knight immediately with knight f3. f3. Oh my gosh. Are, are we watching Grandmasters? This looks like some serious high-level like positional Nick play. from Wake on Z 2008. I would, oh, I would yes, easily yes. confuse that. Exactly. Or, or Ostrowski. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Moist Critical, he's leaning in. He does look like Ostrowski's stunt double or something. Oh, yes, man. he does. Incredible. And now the, the clock situation concerning now for Yasuo as well. He is below four minutes. Okay, well, let's take another look into Moist's stream and see what let's he's doing. Let's do saying. it. Look at that focus. 
Wow. I'm nervous. It lo- it lo- he looks so <laughs> focused. I feel like this is the world championship match or something. It's going to go down in history. That's a great move, 94. They're playing perfectly, both of them. 94, this threatening F6. Crazy. Oh, my gosh. Um, but I will say that in the game yesterday with Nate Hill and Foosley, they also played perfectly the first half of the game. And then they made up with it with like a crazy amount of blunders and time pressure. Uh, and that's what it's coming down to here. Bishop G5 is a bad move. It allows a fork. I see. I'm looking at Charlie's stream. He's about to, he's hovering over Bishop G5. He's hovering over it. That's not a good move. Oh, no. And it's done. And oh, no. Immediately. Danya, the blunder was on move 19. Yep. Almost move 18. I was very close. Very close. He has to give up a piece. He's got to go bishop h4 because that pins the rook. Mm-hmm. And then if Yasuo captures the knight, he captures the rook, and he's in pretty good shape. Chat, honestly, that, that was pretty close. Um, I feel like Danya's a prophet in training. He's not super GM yet, but he's he's certainly getting up there. It's okay. Yeah. Don't, be, don't be uncomfortable. Danya already <laughs> predicted this is how you would feel. In fact, well, Danya thought if he's too accurate, you guys would be worried. So he saw that situation in the future and decided to be off a little bit intentionally. Yeah, and yeah, now he's below three minutes. This is not looking good, but we know how fortunes can change in this tournament. Mm-hmm. It's just that he's just taking way, way, way too long to decide on, on these decisions. That, oh, that's not a good move. He's wow. tilting here. He's going to be down a piece. Now, that doesn't mean anything, because if Yasuo recaptures on e5, he's going to lose that piece right back with f3 at the I'm end. So, I'm already so low on and time. And this is the first word I've heard from Moist Critical. He's just saying he's so low on time. See now, that? Yasuo has to resist the temptation to capture on e5. Charlie wins back the piece at the end with f3. Need to go here. So, two pawns for the piece for Charlie. This is not... Oof. And he blunders right back. Let's see if Charlie... Oh! Not good. Bishop g5. Oh, man. He could have won that piece back by taking the bishop and pinning the knight. That was good. I didn't see that. Well, I think they have a drastic change in their quality of play as the time gets low, which makes sense. It it takes a long time to learn how to deal with time pressure. Yeah, so they're playing about like an I would say like an eighteen hundred this game, <laughs> an unbelievable. Remember when I told you I've never seen anyone improve this quickly? I wasn't exaggerating. It's insane. Wow. It's insane. Incredible. And now the B two pawn is hanging. Charlie has to defend it with a move like Queen E two. Mm-hmm. Hold his sport. Hold his place. I knew I should have gone here. I even saw this cut off my rook. He's I can't believe I did past that. Actions. He's got to mm-hmm. focus on the present here. One simple. Yeah, we still have him. Mistake. We still have his mic live. So even saw that too. Oh no, he's he's feeling a little down on himself. Uh, that's rough. I, I hope he doesn't spend too long feeling bad about the past because he can still turn it around. Yes, he can. Queen a4 would be a nice trap move here because then if the rook captures on b2, he has queen takes rook mate. Rook, rook b1. b1. Giving up another exchange. If he Now Yasuo can, can take on g5 and take on b1. Given the way he's played, I feel like he's going to... Yeah, wow. Are I you mean, kidding incredible. me? Is Yasuo actually a human engine? Insane. I feel like he's a neural net or something. He started like... at like 300 rating just because he didn't have enough data points. And with each game, he has like some kind of exponential growth. This is freaking me out. I, it, I, it is freaking me out as well. But he's not taking the rook. He's taking too long here. Deciding. Mm-hmm. Well, let's let's see if he's... Oh, he's hovering over... Oh, okay. Is he... Yeah, wrong bishop. Yeah, it looks like he's, he's about to play rook f8. I don't know what he's what trying to do here. I spoke he can't too let soon. himself. T- okay. I spoke mm. too soon. Not a bad move, though. He's still up a piece, but Charlie's got to play fast here. He's got to equalize the time. Mm-hmm. Queen e2, for example. All right. Well, we're swapping to Yasuo's audio now to see what he has to say. See if I'm missing anything. Or more like what his music is saying in the back. He can't take this, by the way, because takes, so. <laughs> He's just singing along. He's, just, yeah. He's not even that focused. He's chilling. He's good. jamming. He's stretching in like his gym shorts. Just having a ball here. Jeez. Charlie's got to move. I go for this. He can't right? let himself this? get this low. Don't choke. Try not to. And then I could have went there. And then he can't take because my queen is threatening. But then if I ever move this, if I ever move that, he could just take. So, so he sees most of the tactics. 
He's losing a lot of time. But I'm already up a minute and a half now. I might just wait. But he's just time missing the, free, the the rook. The yeah, exchange. and that's almost a good idea because now Charlie's even more indecisive than usual. Mm -hmm. G three, okay. Lucky Rose, thank you for the sub. Pickled sack, thank you for the sub. That really thing. Ooh. This is a free pawn. He's now. getting down on himself too much. So I should go here. Rook here, F six instantly. Another amazing pawn. move. So let's set up an attack against. Oh the my king, gosh. Clean. Thingy. What would you put Yasuo's real strength at? Just go 14, 1500. Then takes wow. Given this game, I mean, to, with some exceptions, 14, 1500. Maybe 1600. I'm just thinking ahead of moves. If he plans on something, how I react to it. I could also, if he goes here, I could go here, but then he could just... He's got a move. My square. That's bad. I need to get... I think I want to move this and start H5, moving the pawns to take the center more, potentially, too. Doesn't seem too bad, because if I go here, here, he here, so takes, fast. takes, and then I'm getting more of the center, and I'm getting into the pawns, and I'm opening up my diagonals for my bishops. Oh, man. He, he speaks faster than most GMs I know. Oh, it's unbelievable. Below right. 30 seconds. He's going to lose on time. He's just just doesn't see his clock. Oh, man. But it, it, it's not just his clock. The position is so hard. He's about to get attacked. He has, you know, pieces hanging everywhere. So he made a move just to make a move here. Right. But he's got to do that. He's got to see the clock above all else. Yeah, that's very fair. Um, okay, let's go back to Moist Critical. Well, no, it's plus five, right? So I get that. I get a net, right? Is he noticing his clock? We'll find out. He is now. H4 quickly. That's a good move. And now H6 and Bishop takes G3. Yeah, if Yasuo sees that, that's very impressive. I mean, H6 yeah. is pretty intuitive, though, because you're kicking the knight out. Oh, but my Bishop God. takes G3 is not at all. <laughs> if he sees it, I you're fourteen fifteen hundred and he yeah. he's definitely in the top four in terms of favorites for for the event or maybe Favorite. top five top five. Oh, definitely. If he sees Bishop takes G three, I'll be stunned. <laughs> um. Well, moment of truth coming in real Here we soon. We go. Do 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 do. Do, do, do. That's let's see intense exactly. music as he's you know preparing for that that move chat. Is he gonna play it? Is he gonna play Bishop takes G three? Rook G four attacking the queen. He's got to move his queen move now. That's a good move too. That's a good move too. Seven <sighs> seconds. Move Charlie. Oh gosh. He's gonna lose on time. He's just is not seeing his clock. Three seconds. Oh Two. my god. He this will be the first dirty screen. flag. This will be the first dirty flag in the tournament. Yep. And yep. we get to witness it. Two seconds. One second. No nope, flag. Oh my god, I can't believe I just did that. Oh, ooh, yucky. Yeah, Still, I was out of time. A good effort. I mean, oh, I'm stunned at Yasuo's strength, honestly. I can't honestly. believe that. Yuck. Oh, man, that was rough. But honestly, uh, it is Yasuo what it is, played incredibly. It's not even that Moist Critical played poorly. No. He, That's I mean, he played. I hate timeout. He played excellently, but... The middle game strength by Yasuo is unbelievable. I mean, he put his pieces on great squares. He saw F6. He didn't make any clear mistakes, really. I mean, other than blundering B7. Yeah, so he did see this. This was the, the blunder of the game, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Giving up that piece after that, everything went downhill. Yeah, well, um, that, was, that was a very exciting game. So that means that Yasuo is going to move on to the uh, champions division and moist critical is going to be in the consolation which is actually not too bad because he might be a heavy favorite there yeah i believe he is so it might feel bad to lose this game in the moment mm -hmm. but he does have great chance in the consolation bracket and, and i like charlie but against hut someone like hutch he would have had zero chances so yaso however is i wouldn't say he's a favorite but He's someone who's announced himself and burst onto the scene, and he is no one to be messed with, as he's shown now time and time again. Yeah, and when I uh, originally interviewed Yasuo in his first game in PogChamps, he told people his ambition is to win it all and that he wants to give the fans something to believe in. And after these games, I'm a fan and I believe in Yasuo. I'm Indeed. so impressed. Me too. And just the way he was thinking, he was reasoning very very quickly and he was seeing all sorts of tactics just incredible incredible all right well let, let's take a quick look at the game um from the start here so 
It, we saw a Karokan with C6, and we know that Hikaru prepped Yasuo. You prepped Charlie with the white side of the pieces, and he ended up actually getting a very nice opening because Yasuo probably mixed up his lines when he played E6 and ended up giving a free pawn on B7 here. Correct. And after knight C7, bishop B5, knight F6, there was the critical moment where Charlie kind of released the tension too soon. He shouldn't have taken that knight because that basically relinquished the initiative, gave black excellent development. A move like mm -hmm. bishop f4, bishop g5 was to be preferred. And I'll just slow down for a second. So the reason why bishop f4 was so good, but also hard to see is because as soon as Yasuo was able to kick out Charlie's queen from the attack, then despite being down a pawn, he had really good peace activity. And being up in development is often worth as much as a pawn in the opening. So if he would have seen that, it would have helped a lot. Or at least if he would have kept the tension with a move like bishop g5. But um, he probably wasn't sure what to do, so he just went for the trade there. Right. And that wasn't a terrible idea. He got a decent position. Mm -hmm. And really everything, they play, both played flawlessly up until move 19. Bishop g5 blundering that fork which give me a second to catch instantly. up with you there mm -hmm. all right so bishop g5 continue bishop g5 f6 and now the last maybe chance was to bring the bishop back to h4 keeping the rook on d8 pins the problem being still f takes d5 gives two pieces for a rook after charlie dropped his bishop back to d2 well then unfortunately for him yasso just didn't give him any more chances like none. Yeah, it was just perfect play after there one mistake yeah. and he was out well, on that note, chat, we are going to take a quick break. We'll do the usual player interviews afterwards. We're going to uh, take a look in on Slicker in the meantime, so we know that's going to be Let's a ton of fun. Welcome back, everyone. We are joined by Mo, also known as Yasuo. That is his Twitch handle. Yasuo, first of all, congratulations. You are playing incredibly. You impressed both Danya and I, and um, yeah, just, mm, we tip our hat to you. Well, Dude. thank you. I appreciate that. You know, I just, I try to do my best. You know, I had a lot of teachers teach me a few things recently, both, you know, like I said earlier, you, uh, Hikaru, uh, Gotham Chess, maybe Danya in the future. I don't know. You know, we got some, you know, some talking to do, but, you know, I'm just trying to improve as much as I can and play my best chess. Absolutely. Well, why don't we start by uh, reviewing the game a little bit? Do you see okay. the board in the Zoom call? Yes, I do. Can we flip it so I see black? Cause yeah, sure. Let's, like let's, let's go for it. Um, yeah. So when you played e6, were you making the opening moves quickly and missing b7, or did you think that you should give away b7? Uh, okay, so I definitely missed it. I'm not going to lie and say I didn't miss it, mm -hmm. but the thing is, I remember yesterday talking to Hikaru, and I even gave him the situation. He put me in a situation where my his pawn was hanging, and mm -hmm. I took the pawn, and then he showed me that it actually doesn't really matter because once I get my bishop out and I start developing my moves, I feel like I'm so far ahead of him in that scenario in terms of development that the one pawn I should be able to win back later is how I felt. Danya, mm -hmm. you want to add anything there? Yeah, well, that was we were impressed with the way that you handled the, the aftermath of that, especially just the way that you placed your pieces, queen c7, knight f6. And we kind of sense your confidence when we were watching your stream. So at what point did you kind of detect that things were going your way? And how did you go about deciding where to place your pieces in, in sort of the middle game? Uh, so I felt like I was a little on the back foot once he took my pawn and I blundered that. And even when I, he could have taken the a7 pawn too, um, I think I just wanted to focus on attacking his king side and setting up my bishop and then my queen right behind it and having a really nice line. I felt like I was pretty ahead in terms of development. To me, it was hard to find certain moves because like it, it feels – I haven't played many games like this. Well, one, I haven't played many games in general. And then two, I haven't played many games where I'm so far ahead in development that I have to like find moves, either win mm -hmm. pawns or like – just kind of i guess block his pieces from moving so i was struggling a little bit to find moves like i was playing almost honestly one of the slowest games i've ever played i was like a little lost in terms of what to wait, do wait the slowest game you've ever played and you still had two minutes left over at the end yeah i i just i don't know i just the, i feel like the moves in general like i i feel like i didn't really have too many bad moves i guess like that that's how it felt to me because his pieces weren't really threatening too hard so i felt like no matter what i could play what i played no matter what, it was like always half decent. So my goal was just to develop my pieces. And then I was trying to get my rooks developed. It was kind of hard because the middle was taken. So I was thinking of ideas of pushing my pawn and taking, taking. But I wanted to just make sure I didn't lose the dark bishop unless I was winning something because I didn't want to lose that attacking piece towards the uh, king side. And since you've been picking, you know, chess up like a sponge, I just want to point out one idea to you. So if you mm -hmm. see the current board, yeah. um, 
a move that you missed before castling, but you you could have also played if he you took your your pawn on a7 was a way to stop Charlie from castling. If you place your bishop on d3, he can't castle, he can't go through check, and then his king is going to be stuck in the center of the board, and you can just like go for moves like e5, opening mm. it up. Yeah, I think I actually saw that move, just putting my piece there. I just didn't really see what I gained. I forgot, honestly, that when he like moves the piece in check, then I can win a rook or whatever it is. But I, I get scared you, putting you my pieces You can't win a rook. Far. He can't castle through check, so he right. can't move his king at all. He keeps oh. his king vulnerable in the center. Wait, even if he moves his king to G, G, G1, it doesn't matter because like Illegal. It, it counts as a yep. like, travel piece. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't exactly. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, but I, I get scared when I keep my pieces too far in the back line without too much defense. That's why I didn't move mm -hmm. my piece there. No, it, it's to... super reasonable, and that's mm -hmm. why we just wanted to show it to you now so yeah. you know for free future games because we, we didn't expect this move to be one that comes to mind. Yeah, I appreciate that. What yeah, you... and we were impressed with the rook left as well, move 25. Getting the rook involved in the attack, we saw that you were generating these attacking ideas, and you put them in practice very nicely. I'm catching up there to the position where you talked about with the rook lift. Okay, there yeah. we go, Danya. It's on the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is, this is a part, I guess, where it felt like the middle ground was too hard to take because both of our pawns were kind of just covering the square, so my rook couldn't get active. That's why I end up pushing the F pawn. I don't really like pushing the pawns on my king's side or my king's pawn because, like, obviously it's, like, defending pieces and I want to make sure mm -hmm. my king's always safe. But one, he didn't have his light square bishop, and then I also just have my pawns lined up so he can't do any funny tricks with the queen. So I decided to just push it, break the middle a little more, and then get, my, get an avenue for my rook to get into the game. At this point, I wasn't sure what to do. I think when he pushed his pawn to defend the, the, the knight, I knew that pushing my rook to h6 didn't really generate any attacking moves that's why i ended up just pushing the pawn to give my even my uh king more space i guess um and then i was just looking at ways i didn't really like my problem is i don't know how to attack these pawns on his side like what would you guys recommend for this situation where like how do i generate more of an advantage like is it the way i played or am i is there any type of ideas where i can find a mate because i you know. Well, we actually have a move after knight f3. So h6 was great. You are moving the knight out of here. I think when you're up material like this and the white king is so exposed and you know so naked here, you can try to look for potential sacrifices. So one move that would have been brilliant is actually if you would have given up your bishop for two pawns here, because if you're able to break through the king's defenses, first of all, if he takes with the pawn, you're coming in with the queen and you have checkmate next move. True, actually, yeah. So you can always try to keep an eye out on sacrifices when your opponent's king doesn't have that many pieces nearby. So we just have a knight or when the pawns have moved forward a lot and there's a ton of space. Mm -hmm. mm. But your move rook g4 was, from a practical sense, very good because yes. Charlie was so low on time. It's hard to detect that long range attack on the queen. Yeah. Well, overall, like we said, you played incredibly well. Um, I, I do have another question. Did you see that the bishop was attacking the rook or you're just too focused on no, going no, no. in for the kill? I saw it. I just, I, so what I saw is that he had a double attack. I think I, did I hang my piece for a second or no, I didn't. So when he moved his knight, I realized that my piece was under double attack and either I need to retreat my piece or, or defend it, but mm -hmm. I realized I'm up on material. So worst case scenario, I can trade. So I decided to move it there because I know he can't take with queen. So he'd have to move his queen. And then once he does that, I have to move my bishop, but mm -hmm. then my rook is in a better spot than it was before attacking like has like a whole entire row. I, I don't know, it just felt good to me there. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, that's, I mean, what's impressive to me is your thinking process and just the work that you put into this game. So absolute kudos, hats, hats off to you. I know that I coached Charlie, I'm gonna be out and say that, but um, yeah, so I was just so impressed with your play um, throughout the game. So very well done and you got rewarded for your grind. So I'm very happy to see that. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Yeah, and um we were telling you this before we were live, but Danya said that your rating is closer to 14, 1500. When you came in for the first interview, you were telling people you're in here to win it all. Is that still your ambition? So it is. I'm a little scared now because my friend Voiboy, actually, I think he's group A, he's winning group A. And since I lost to Hutch, I think even if XQC somehow miracle, God comes down and puts a new brain to XQC and helps him get the dub and like beats Hutch, I still won't. I'll still have to play Voiboy, Boy, so I think I'm kind of scared now because Voiboy is like the favorite to win the tournament. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah, I'll still try my hardest. Obviously, I'll try to prep, figure out some type of opening to put make Voiboy Boy uncomfortable. But Voiboy Boy is a really solid player, so I guess I'll see how that works. That's gonna be a tough game. Well, that's a very practical and objective way to look at it. Thank you so much, Mo, for for being here for the interview and for your just incredible performance. Congratulations once again. Thank you so much. Thank you, you guys. guys. Take care. Bye.